Urgent. Manchester United crowd, see what just happened. Nobody expected this. But first, subscribe to the channel, because here we have videos every day with the latest news from Manchester United. To not miss any news from the Red Devils, don't forget to turn on notifications. Now let's go to the news. Manchester United need more from their £130 million midfielders after Tottenham defeat. Man United slipped to attain 2-0 defeat at Tottenham to maintain their poor away record from last season, with the midfield an area of concern for Eric Ten Hag. Mason Mount started this game brightly and was involved in some of United's best moments in the early exchanges, but he drifted out of the contest once again and is still yet to leave a significant imprint on a struggling midfield. A trio of Casemiro, Mount and Bruno Fernandes was supposed to take United up another gear, but none have found their form at the start of this season. Casemiro looked sluggish for the second game in a row and while he produced some neat touches early on here, Mount is doing his best work off the ball and not impacting games enough on it. Wolves found it far too easy to play through the middle of United on Monday and Tottenham found the space to their liking as well. Yves Bissouma was the dominant holding midfielder on the pitch and Pate Matossar was the most productive forward-thinking midfielder. This was a midfield that lacked energy and influence as the game wore on. Ten Hag has overseen a clearout at OID Trafford, but it was tempting to wonder whether this was a game that might have suited Fred, now at Fenerbahce. United's passes had little impact, so maybe a more disruptive presence might have fared well. There was no similar option on the bench. This is still early days for United's midfield and there is certainly more to come from Mount, but he needs a performance sooner rather than later and Eric Ten Hag will want to see some more dominant displays from Casemiro as well, who is a shadow of the influential player he was last season at the moment. The wait for a significant away win in the Ten Hag era goes on for United. Having failed to beat any of the top nine last season, they continued a poor record on the road in big games in North London. This was a game United should have won at the end of April, when they led a dispirited rabble of a Spurs side 2-0 before somehow having to cling on for a draw by the end of the game. They looked the better side in the first half on Saturday, but the way they folded after the break was alarming. They barely mustered a response after going behind. If United are to improve on last season's third place then getting more points away from home is essential. This could have served as a confidence-boosting win. Instead, it just reinforced last season's flaws. United went behind in a game they had played well in, and then just folded in the manner of the paper aeroplanes gathered behind Andre Onana's goal. This was a fascinating battle between a team keen to play out from the back and one who has taken their desire to press to a new level this season. The improvement in United's press in Ten Hag's second campaign has been obvious since the start of pre-season and they often committed at least six players to try and win the ball back when Spurs went short from Guglielmo Vicorio at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's a strategy that comes with risk and reward for both teams. Tottenham played through the press early on for an excellent chance for Sun Heung Min, but a few minutes later Mount moved up to win the ball on the edge of the area, and the turnover in possession led to Anthony curling a shot just over. United found it harder to execute as the game wore on, however, partly due to the control Tottenham exerted in the second half. They looked the fitter side as the game wore on and opportunities for United to try and pin them in were few and far between. There will come a point when having a goalkeeper who is good with the ball at his feet is no longer such a shock to the system for United, but we're not quite there yet and if Andre Onana continues to play passes of the quality he produced midway through the first half, we might not be for a while. The whole move encapsulated why Ten Hag saw Onana as such an upgrade on David de Gea. He was in a position to sweep up play 30 yards from his own goal, taking a touch away from the chasing Tottenham attackers, before looking up and spraying a crossfield pass from one corner of the pitch to the other, finding Alejandro Garnacho with space to attack as both sides looked to reorganise. Garnacho's low cross was cut out when United had options in the box and it was a waste of a really good attacking position created by their goalkeeper come holding midfielder, who showed he can the basics as well with a sharp save from Pate Matossar on the half-hour mark. He was let down by his teammates here. Maybe every Premier League weekend should start with an update over the handball rule for that week. What with all the talk of silhouettes and natural positions it's hard to keep up. 
who knows what the rule is if it's now in a position to let defenders put their arms out to make themselves bigger when trying to block a shot. That is what Christian Romero did when closing down Garnacho in the first half. Predictably, the shot hit his arm, but somehow neither Michael Oliver nor VAR Simon Long felt it was a penalty. He would have been given without a pause for thought last season and if a rule change has been intended to try and even the balance, it has clearly gone too far. This was Romero gaining an advantage by using his arms to make himself bigger. It's a nailed-on penalty. United got away with a VAR failure last week. There is an idea these things even themselves out, but trying telling that to Wolves. They should have conceded a penalty at Old Trafford on Monday and had one here. Manchester United takeover latest as Sheikh Jassim grows concerned over sale. Manchester United fans are in the dark regarding the future of their football club as the Glazers fail to provide updates. Manchester United supporters have been hit with further bad takeover news. On the eve of United's first away trip of the season to Tottenham Hotspur, men's sport understands Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Alfoni is growing concerned the Glazers will not actually sell the club. The American family announced in November a strategic review into the ownership of the club. Since then, there has been mainly radio silence from the siblings as United fans ponder what is to come. Avram Glazer was asked during the pre-season tour of the US for an update but he failed to provide a response related to the matter at hand. In the Manchester Evening News' latest look at the takeover headlines, things are looking bleak for those who wish for a new owner. Sheikh Jassim's takeover fears revealed. Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani is still awaiting a response from the Glazer family to his submission to buy Manchester United. Sheikh Jassim and the Ineos Group, led by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, submitted offers upwards of £5 billion in May, but sources say there is a real concern the Glazers may not sell United. Sheikh Jassim's premium offer remains on the table, and a source close to his camp said, The next steps are up to the sellers, and all we can do is wait. The Manchester Evening News reported in February Joel and Avram Glazer, the United co-chairman, are reluctant to sell. Their siblings Brian, Edward, Kevin and Darcy also sit on the United board. Figures involved in a possible takeover of United are becoming weary with the process. The Glazers announced a strategic review on November 22. A Porter's group holds no takeover preference. Manchester United supporters trust, must. Spokesman Chris Rumfit has announced the group has no preference on whether Sheikh Jassim or Sir Jim Ratcliffe takes over from the Glazers at the end of the takeover process. He told the How to Buy a Football Club podcast, must have no preference, we don't want the Glazers in minority ownership, that's for sure. We don't know enough about either bid so we can't give our preference yet. Manchester United to receive hefty transfer offer from Saudi Arabia for 27-year-old. Manchester United are expecting a big money bid to land in their inbox over the coming days with Marshall's name on it. Al Hilal are one Saudi pro league side that have shortlisted the Frenchman after recently acquiring Neymar from Paris Saint Germain, while other clubs in the division are monitoring his situation ahead of a potential approach. It would leave Eric Ten Hag with a tricky decision to make. Selling Marshall would leave him incredibly short in the forward department as Rasmus Hodgland is currently injured and Marcus Rashford looks out of sorts when deployed as the number 9. Time for Marshall to leave. However, the funds they recuperate for the 27-year-old could then be used to seek a direct replacement. As well as that, Marshall's injury issues are an ongoing concern that looks unlikely to be solved this season. He has only just returned to action after a hamstring problem, which kept him out of the pre-season tour and made just 17 starts in total across the 2022-2023 campaign. Eliquipe are reporting that Manchester United and Bayern Munich have both shown an interest in signing Paris Saint-Germain midfielder, Marco Verratti, 30, who is free to leave the club this summer. Plenty of departures are expected from PSG between now and the end of the window. One of those is expected to be veteran midfielder Verratti, who has been at the club for over a decade. The Italian international has been told by Luis Campos and Luis Enrique that he is surplus to requirements, and finding a new club is therefore a priority. He was left out of PSG squad to face Toulouse FC on Saturday. Verratti already has an agreement in place with Al Ali, however, the Saudi side are yet to find an agreement with PSG. However, there is also interest around Europe. 
Notably, Manchester United and Bayern Munich have both displayed an interest in Verratti in the past few days. Eliquipe add that a move to Manchester United cannot be ruled out. Les Parisians believe that a deal could be done around the 60 million euro mark. Man United considering Mason Greenwood U-turn after fierce online backlash. Mason Greenwood, 21, has not played for Manchester United since January 2022, with the club in intense internal deliberation over his future with Eric Ten Hag's side. Manchester United have been rocked by the backlash over the possibility of reinstating Mason Greenwood and are now reportedly considering a U-turn. United are yet to make a firm decision over the future of Greenwood, who has not played for the club since January 2022. They have been carrying out an internal investigation after charges of attempted rape, engaging in controlling and coercive behaviour, and assault occasioning actual bodily harm were dropped by the Crown Prosecution Service, CPS, in February. The club released a statement on Wednesday following speculation that Chief Executive Richard Arnold had briefed club staff about the intention to bring Greenwood back into Eric Ten Hag's squad. They denied a decision had been made either way and said intensive internal deliberation was continuing. Manchester Evening News now reports that the ferocious reaction to Greenwood's potential return has led club executives to consider a U-turn. TV presenter Rachel Riley has been one of the most high-profile fans to voice their discontent saying she would stop supporting the club were Greenwood to return, while banners were displayed at Old Trafford for the first game of the season against Wolves. The men reports that United are reluctant to address the matter ahead of the Premier League game against Tottenham on Saturday evening, and before the Women's World Cup final between England and Spain on Sunday. Mirror Football have contacted the club to seek comment. Ahead of the trip to Tottenham, Ten Hag was asked whether he envisions Greenwood playing for him this season. He said, I am focusing on games, focusing on my team and focusing on the players who are available, for the rest I refer to the statement the club made. Wednesday's statement read, following the dropping of all charges against Mason Greenwood in February 2023, Manchester United has conducted a thorough investigation into the allegations made against him, the statement reads. This has drawn on extensive evidence and context not in the public domain and we have heard from numerous people with direct involvement or knowledge of the case. Throughout this process, the welfare and perspective of the alleged victim has been central to the club's inquiries, and we respect her right to lifelong anonymity. We also have responsibilities to Mason as an employee, as a young person who has been with the club since the age of seven, and as a new father with a partner. The fact-finding phase of our investigation is now complete, and we are in the final stages of making a decision on Mason's future. Contrary to media speculation, that decision has not yet been made and is currently the subject of intensive internal deliberation. Responsibility ultimately rests with the chief executive officer. Once made, the decision will be communicated and explained to the club's internal and external stakeholders. This has been a difficult case for everyone associated with Manchester United, and we understand the strong opinions it has provoked based on the partial evidence in the public domain. We ask for patience as we work through the final stages of this carefully considered process. And now Red Fan I want to know about you. What is your opinion about this? Do you think Mason Greenwood should return to Man United? Put your opinion in the comments, I don't know if you know but your opinion is very important for Red Devils at any time. I'll be back with another first-hand news from Manchester United for you.